This week, we continue our Coffee Talk series on some of the artwork and features of our restored and renewed Santa Maria Church. Last week, we talked about the entrance to the church and the new baptismal font. This week, we stay in the same area, but we will make a U-turn. As soon as you go through the second set of doors and enter the body of the church and step up to the baptismal font, If you turn around 180 degrees, you will see two cabinets with glass doors. The one on your right has a wooden carving of the baptism of Jesus by St. John the Baptist. The story of this sculpture is interesting. Several years ago, I was asked to accompany Bishop Barber on what is called the Ad Limina visit, which means to the threshold. Every bishop in the world must give an accounting of their stewardship of their diocese every five years to the Pope and the various offices of the Holy See. Since I had been on a previous one with then Bishop Corleone and Bishop Barber had never been on one, I was considered the old hand, so he invited me to accompany him. A longtime priest friend of mine from Connecticut who had never been to Rome before tagged along, and we would take advantage of my free time to wander around Rome. Anyone who has ever visited Rome knows that every street has at least one church and one restaurant. And it's not unusual to find streets with more than one church and more than one restaurant. And perhaps you've heard the saying that you'll never find a bad restaurant in Rome. I would add that you will always find an historical and interesting church in Rome. During our Restore and Renew project here, I was looking for some appropriate work of art to place near the baptismal font that related to the baptism of Jesus. Whenever I was traveling during those years, I would drop into various Catholic churches looking for something appropriate that would inspire an idea. When I was in Rome, I kind of forgot about it. And my priest friend and I were wandering into this church that was named St. John the Baptist, San Giovanni Battista in Fiorentini. My first impression was that it was not a particularly remarkable church, at least by Rome standards, until I saw this sculpture of the baptism of Jesus. Instantly, I knew that I found what I was looking for. So we took photographs of it, emailed them to a sculptor in Vietnam with whom I had made contact in previous years, and asked him to do this carving relief based solely on some digital photographs that I sent him. He did an absolutely stunning job, if I say so myself. Now, a word about the original artist who did the marble piece that I took a photograph of, and then a word about the travails of the sculpture itself. The sculptor was Francesco Mochi. He was an Italian sculptor in the early 1630s, For a while, he was rated among Rome's best sculptors. But soon thereafter, he became overshadowed by some more popular and well-known sculptors, like the famous Bernini, another one by the name of Algardi. This particular rendition of the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist was commissioned to be placed in the baptistry of this very church. San Giovanni Battista in Fiorentini. It was at the time the national church for expatriate Florentines. However, after the sculpture was completed, the patrons rejected it. They didn't like it. And so it ended up in various locations all over Rome, first in the patron's own palace for a short while, Then it got stuck in the middle of the Milvian Bridge in Rome and stayed there until World War II. 
where it was damaged by a bombing. Then it was moved to the Palazzo Bracci Museum for a while, until someone finally prevailed on the powers that be that it should at last come to rest in the church for which it was commissioned. If you're ever in Rome, check it out. The church is located near a bend in the Tiber River and it fronts on the Piazza dell'Or. That's our art history lesson and travelogue for this week's Coffee Talk. But tune in next week where we will uncover the mystery of the other cabinet on the other side of our entry doors.